Welcome to the Deep Dive. Ready to explore something new today? We're talking about, get this, Indian wine. Ooh, I'm excited for this one. You know, most people think of like France or Italy when they think about wine, but what's so cool is that India's actually got a history of winemaking going back like 4,000 years. Wow, 4,000 years. That's incredible. Yeah. So we're talking, what, almost as old as the Indus Valley civilization? It's amazing how much history there is around wine. Totally. And it's not like it's just ancient history either. India's got a really vibrant wine scene today. That's true. Okay, so before we get into specifics about the wine itself, could you give us a little background on how Indian wine even got to where it is now? Sure, yeah. So colonization, you know, British influence and all that, it kind of put a damper on things for a bit. Makes sense. It tends to do that. Right. But then the last few decades, there's been this huge surge in Indian winemaking. It's kind of like, remember how craft beer got really popular? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's kind of like that. There's this thirst for something new, something different, and Indian wine is really heading the spot for a lot of people. That's a great analogy. It makes total sense. So we've got this demand for great wine, but what is it about India specifically that makes it such a good place to grow grapes? I mean, it can't be just anywhere, right? You're so right. It's not just the demand. India's got this incredibly diverse geography, which is like a dream come true for winemakers. I mean, you've got everything. You've got regions like Nashik up in the Sayadri Mountains that's often called the Napa Valley of India. They've got this perfect Mediterranean-like climate. Oh, I can imagine sitting out there with a glass of Sauvignon Blanc enjoying the view. Exactly. It's perfect for those classic reds and whites that everyone loves. But then you go down south and it's a completely different story. Oh, so there's more. So much more. Let's talk about Bangalore for a second. It's known for its tech industry, sure. But did you know it also has volcanic soil? Volcanic soil. I wouldn't have thought of that. It's wild. And those volcanic soils, they give the wines from that region this really distinctive mineral character. It's so cool. That's incredible. So we're really talking about how the land itself, the dirt, influences the taste of the wine. Absolutely. It's all connected. And speaking of connections, let's talk about the grapes themselves. I was looking at the list of what we're covering today, and I see some familiar faces like Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon. Those are classics for a reason, right? For sure. But then we've also got Vitus vinifera indica. Have you ever heard of that one? Vitus vinifera indica. Hmm. Can't say I have. It sounds almost, I don't know, musical in a way. It does, doesn't it? And it speaks to how unique Indian wine really is. You've got those international grapes we talked about, but then you've got these indigenous varieties that are totally unique to India. It's like, you know how you might have honey from your local farmer's market that tastes totally different from the honey at the supermarket? Oh yeah, I love that local honey. It's like that. It's all about the terroir, the specific place where those grapes are grown that gives the wine its own special something. And in the case of Vitus vinifera indica, it's a taste of India's incredible heritage, bottled up and ready to be enjoyed. It really opens your eyes to a whole other side of the wine world, doesn't it? It's like you think you know something and then boom, a whole new world opens up. Sure. Exactly. And speaking of opening up, let's get into the good stuff, the wines themselves. We've talked about reds and whites, but Indian winemakers aren't afraid to experiment. Oh, I like the sound of that already. So what else are we diving into? Picture this. You're at a wine tasting right. And you start with one of those really bold, robust reds. You know the ones I'm talking about? The ones that really hit you with those tannins, that satisfying dryness? Oh, yeah. Big fan of the tannins. Nothing like a good Cabernet that leaves you wanting more. Exactly. You got it. But then you switch gears completely. You move on to a crisp, refreshing white wine, maybe something with a little tropical fruitiness, perfect for a warm afternoon. Okay. I'm already sold on this tasting menu, and we're just getting started. What else is there? Oh, we're not even close to done. Hold on tight because we're even seeing rosés and sparkling wines starting to gain traction in India. Wow. So really running the gamut of wine styles. This is incredible. Okay, so we've got the grapes, we've got the land, but what about the winemaking process itself? Are Indian winemakers sticking to traditional methods or are they kind of, you know, doing their own thing? That's what's so cool about it. It's this really interesting mix of old and new so you've got winemakers who are carrying on those ancient traditions, passing down techniques through generations. You know, that real connection to the history of winemaking in India. Yeah, that sense of heritage is really special. Totally. But then you've also got these innovative winemakers who are bringing in modern techniques and technologies, pushing the boundaries, experimenting. So they're honoring the past, but also like forging their own path. Right. I love that. It's like a conversation between tradition and innovation. 
Exactly. And that conversation is resulting in some seriously delicious wines. I bet. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the how how these wines are made, the unique grapes and regions. Mm -hmm. But what about the who? Who's drinking all this amazing Indian wine? Well, domestically, the market in India is booming. People are really embracing wine, especially as a special occasion drink. And there's definitely a preference for those slightly sweeter wines we talked about. That makes sense. It's like you want something special, something that feels celebratory. Right. But when it comes to the international market, that's where things get interesting. Okay. Yeah. Tell me more about that because I'm curious. Are we going to start seeing Indian wines on like restaurant wine lists here? Mm Mm-hmm in grocery stores. What needs to happen for that to become a reality? There are definitely some challenges. I mean, the global wine market is very competitive, right? There are already so many established players and building brand recognition takes time. That's true. It's not like it happens overnight. Definitely not. But, and this is a big but, Indian wines have some really unique advantages that give them huge potential in the global market. Okay. So what are those advantages? What makes Indian wine stand out in such a crowded market? So first off, there's a growing demand for organic and biodynamic wines, and that aligns perfectly with India's agricultural tradition. Oh, that's a great point. Right. And on top of that, remember those unique flavors we were talking about, those indigenous grapes? That's huge. Consumers, especially those who are really into wine, they're always looking for something new, something different to try. And Indian wine definitely checks that box. Yeah, it really does feel like there's so much potential there, so much waiting to be discovered. Totally. And for anyone listening who's thinking, okay, I need to try this, we did come across some specific names while we were researching. Oh, do tell. I'm always up for a good recommendation. Well, one that kept popping up was Sula Vineyards. They're kind of a big deal. Sula Vineyards. Yeah, I think I've seen their bottles around. What makes them so special? Well, for starters, they've been around since the late 90s, so they were really at the forefront of this whole Indian wine resurgence. They've really helped put Indian wine on the map, you know. That's really cool. They were kind of like the pioneers, paving the way for everyone else. Exactly. And they've been experimenting with different grapes and winemaking techniques, really pushing the boundaries of what Indian wine can be. It's just exciting to see a company that's not afraid to be innovative, especially in an industry as, well, traditional as winemaking. For sure. It just goes to show you how much passion and creativity there is in the Indian wine world right now. Absolutely. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today, from ancient history to modern innovations, unique grapes, delicious wines. It's been quite a journey. What would you say is the biggest takeaway for our listeners? What do you hope they walk away with? after this deep dive. Honestly, for me, it's about more than just the wine itself. It's about this incredible story of cultural shifts, of climate adaptation, of this global palate that's becoming more and more adventurous. I love that. It's like taking a sip of wine and getting a glimpse into a whole of the world. Right. It's about opening yourself up to new experiences, new flavors, new stories. Beautifully said. And on that note, I think it's time for us to wrap up this deep dive. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners before we go? Just this. The next time you're out and about, maybe browsing the wine aisle, don't be afraid to grab a bottle of Indian wine. You might just be surprised at what you discover. I couldn't agree more. Cheers to stepping outside our comfort zones and exploring the world one sip at a time.